the Suzuki's front brakes need replacing, they started grinding, so I've got to take this off as well as the pads. I only need a 14, a 17, and I think a 12mm socket or a spanner to do most of the work. If you're going to go doing any work on your car, don't just rely on the, the jack. Make sure you get a good jack stand underneath and have the car resting on the jack stands. They're a little bit more solid, they won't collapse on you. So just take take the slide bolts out. Now that allows me to take out the middle part and you don't want this to hang on the hose. You want to hang it up somehow so that the weight isn't on the hose. That way that's out of the way while we get this slot off. As you can see on there this pad had gone right down to the metal. The inside pads seemed to wear out faster than the outside ones and this one was right down and it was grinding on my, on my disc. All these points have already got, scored up the, the disc which is why I've got to replace the whole disc now. When I get that off I'll show you the back of that because it feels shocking. The disc is supposed to pop off and you can see it, it's really rusty. So I'm going to get a bit of WD just to soak this in. So the, ba the back of the disc will be rusted onto the hub as well. So anywhere where there's a, a hole, just get some in there. Doesn't matter if it goes all over this disc because it's, it's coming out. I'm going to let that soak in for a little bit. Um, while that's soaking in, I'm going to clean this up a bit. Now when you're doing all this you want to make sure you're wearing a dust mask um, because especially if you use asbestos pads all of this dust might have asbestos dust in it. Never mind the fact that, that it's just really dusty. <coughs> um, the previous pads I had on here weren't asbestos based so I don't have to worry about that part but there's still a lot of dust involved and these little springs here I want to get cleaned up start by just getting a bit of the dust off. Now, now we're going to get a bit noisy. So now you can see I've got good clean surfaces in here which is what you want as long as they're not all caked up with crud. Just get your um, shims back in there. So that's that's ready to go back in once I get the rest all cleaned up. Getting the disc off, because it's rusted, you can hit it around the front to try and loosen it, hit it from behind, and then there's these two holes here for an M8 bolt to go in to help pull it away from the, the axle. So I'm going to give it a bit of a tap first. Now being that this is so rusted on, I want to be really careful doing this that I don't snap the bolts off. Here's a combination of the two. Now I can see it's starting to pull the disc away, but only where the bolts are.
that's the sound you want to hear. A little bit freaky when it first happens. But it does mean that that um, surface is stuck by the rust. Has broken free. of that disc is absolutely shocking it was chewed to pieces so that's why I'm replacing it I need to you know, clean this surface off as well you can see the, the back of this it basically just surface rust made them stick together So that's essentially ready for the disc to go back on. I want to clean a lot of this brake crap off the back as well. <coughs> Let's use a brush to get a lot of the loose stuff off first. And again, making sure you were in a dust mask because you can see all the dust floating around. This part isn't critical, but I just figured if I've got the wheel off, I've got the brake off, I've got the disc off, it's one time to get a lot of this sort of stuff that could cause a little bit of grinding wear and tear out. We'll give it a blow off and then just wipe off those loose bits. Before you go putting your caliper back together, you've got to make sure that you squeeze the, the piston back in. Let's get a bit of wood and a seat clamp. Well, this is actually an F clamp. Just wind that in slowly. I just keep checking the um, brake master cylinder fluid level as I'm pressing this down. There we go. Give it all a bit of a clean out. This part, this surface of the caliper, just here. I'm going to make sure that's nice and clean because that's the bit that's pressing against your disc, I mean against your pad. And make sure you replace any shims that need to be in the assembly before. So there's my brand new disc, much better condition than the, the other number. And they basically just sit on. They get held on with the pressure of the um, wheel nuts. Now they've got a bit of a protective surface coating on them which you can clean off. I've got some brake part cleaner to get that off. So there's the new pad. There's the old pad or what was left of it. So you get your Get your pad set into position in your caliper. So they're ready to go. And you slip it over your disc. And get your bolts in and done up to hold it in place. Just to make sure there's enough 
torque on that. You want them to be done up securely. The slide bolts need to have a little bit of grease on them. I'm going to clean these off, put a bit of fresh grease on, but you don't want a lot, it's just so that they can slide through. If you end up putting too much grease on, they can um, act more like a, a plunger and they won't slide that well. Just a really thin coat. Because that plunger's back, this should just slip over your pads, like so. Get it to go through the rubber boot section of the assembly. Now this part, these bolts just tighten up into this part of the caliper and allow the caliper to slide back and forth on a little bit of grease on the other bolt or the slide bolt. A very little bit. So just wipe off the excess. That's nice and tight in there, but the assembly, can, the caliper can move around. And before I put the wheel and the hub cover on, this is where you can use the brake part clamp to clean over this section. The reason I didn't do it before is because I knew my hands were going to get all over it with greasy stuff, so the brake cleaning spray that I've got, this one, um, it sprays on and you can use it to clean brake components while it's all assembled. And then you just let air dry and it evaporates off. You can see it dissolving the stuff off it. I'll just let that air dry before I go putting the tyre back on. And before I put the tie back on, I want to put my hub cover back on as well. That's how you um, will change your, your rotors and your, your pads on this particular Suzuki model. Thanks for watching.